Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sarah Levis from the Growth Unit at the United Church of Canada here with another edgy conversation. And uh, very happy today to be talking with uh, two of the staff members from the Center for Christian Studies in Manitoba, uh, Marcy Gibson and Scott Douglas. And I'm going to hand it over to them to, uh, to introduce our introduce themselves there's some them, themselves after i've re relearn how to talk scott uh what is uh what is your role <laughs> at the center um at the center for christian studies thank you so much for being here today hi sarah it's nice to be here yeah so uh i'm scott douglas and i'm the program coordinator uh at the center for christian studies so i uh i work uh, to support the the program staff uh, in educating our students. So we prepare students, um, primarily pre prepare students for diagonal ministry, um, uh, but we also do um, uh, you know, leadership training and theological education for anybody who's interested. Um, and, and so I do a bit of teaching and a bit of uh, uh, curriculum design uh, and um, I look after the library and other things like that, and I support people like Marcy. And uh, and you sure do. <laughs> so I'm Marcy, and I'm a part-time member of the program staff team. So there's three of us who are primarily responsible for teaching and supporting students through their learning process. Um, and my role in particular with the program staff is that most of the time I'm supporting the integration year, so the final year of the program in which students are, are continuing to strengthen their, their links between their theology and their practice and their ministry skills and their analysis. Thank you very much, both of you. You've both got a, a lot of roles at the school. Scott, I heard you say that you're at the you're in charge of the, the library. My father is a librarian. All right. <laughs> Let's hear it for librarians. Let's hear it for librarians, indeed. Um, so uh, we've talked a little bit before uh, we started recording, and you both know that here at Edge, we're, uh, we, are, uh, we are interested in innovative ministry and innovative ways of looking at being church in the world. And uh, one of the things that, that drew me to the uh, the center to for Christian studies is uh, is uh, your uh, your philosophy on innovation that you take with your students as your uh, as you're educating them to be uh, diaconal ministers and in your programs. Um, uh, either of you, what role do you see innovation playing in the emerging church? Um, what why don't when I start by uh, by being contrary, uh, just just to make this an edgy conversation, um, I'm I'm I think that innovation, kind of on its own, uh, is not terribly useful. Uh, you can you can get drawn into the kind of the cult of the new. Uh, we're just doing this because it's it's new and it seems flashy, or or you can get drawn by your own insecurity. Like um, I, I feel like I don't. We don't know how what we're doing anymore. We don't know how we're how to do this. So let's just try some stuff. So, um, which is not what Edge is about. But but I think if if you're just doing innovation, um, just for the sake of doing something new, I think you, those are the traps you can fall into. So I think where edge for, where innovation is helpful is when it's a it's a real adaptation to a changing context. Um, and so this requires a sense of understanding of your context and uh, a clear sense of purpose about why why you're why you want to change um, and sometimes that that change can can clarify for you that, that changing how you do things can help clarify the why um, and sometimes that purpose draws you back to your core identity to your calling to your reason for being um, that you know we, we we thought we were doing this for this reason but when we change we realized that actually we the whole time uh, we've been doing it for for this reason, uh, and so that becomes our our foundation. Uh, so, in that sense, you're not doing something new; you're just doing something that's foundational for you uh, in a, in a new way. Um, Marcy, does that ring true at all, or I just made up yeah, some stuff? It does. Um, I mean, I would answer the question too by bringing it back to our 
our current tagline, which is imagine church differently, <laughs> which I think um, speaks to, yes, innovation um, playing a role in the emerging church in and in the current church, frankly, um, that part of what we do is, is prepare people to imagine church differently. Um, but I also think there's something really important about the fact that this is um, to make links between innovation that's happening now and emerging church movements that are happening now and those that have been happening um, forever. Uh, and so making the links between uh, what does it mean to be innovative? What does it mean to be community minded or community focused? What does it mean to do, be doing marginalized ministries? Um, and those who've been doing those kinds of marginalized ministries and community based ministries um, for many generations uh, and recognizing the place of that in the church um, throughout its time, as well as what it's happening now. And there are, there are ways that we can learn from the innovation that's happened previously um, that maybe is not always as well known. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because sometimes the thing that feels new or innovative now um, has been around for a long time, but it's not been in the mainstream. Um, yeah, so so yeah, that that go that going to the edges, that going to the margins, uh, is a, is a part of kind of bring bringing life into the church. I love this conversation already because I think what you both said is is so insightful. Um, because yes, there sometimes there is that temptation to just do something new for the sake of of doing something new, but in but. But yes, uh, and 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 tell me if I'm interpreting you wrong, either of you. But in in order to do something that's uh, um, really really useful and and really ad addressing um, the challenges that we face in society, yeah, you 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 really need to know, as you said, Scott, the your context and the context in which you're you're operating and that uh and that and you need to know yourself as a community of faith to to do that and that's a lot of uh that's a lot of uh inner work and discernment mm -hmm. yeah so not something to jump into not something to jump into willy-nilly but worth doing all the same yeah 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 and with with uh an ongoing discernment and um and and yeah it, I, yeah i think it's not the kind of like you say it's not the kind of thing where you sort of say okay now we're going to change we figured it out here we're doing it this way but it's 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 evolving and so you're always um you're always checking how it's going um uh, one of the things that we do at cs uh as kind of a regular part of our our program is a, a lot of uh feedback and a lot of evaluation uh, so kind of after everything we do, it, people get tired of it sometimes, but after everything we do, we sort of say, okay, how was that? What, how did that um, work for you? Uh, what would you do differently? Uh, so we're always kind of um, open to ch changing things. And I think that's, um, that, in, that innovation that is, that is open to changing is going to be kind of more robust and more um, attentive. Again, I think that's very wise. It's a, it's a process. Yeah. And one of the things that we stress with our with our students, with our participants, is also that link between purpose and process. Um, so being able to set intentional purpose and goals, and knowing, you know, why what are you trying to work towards? Um, what is that? that hope, that end, end piece, um, and, uh, and then how to, how to build intentional process towards that. Um, and we do a lot of work that is focused um, around intentional process, intentional group building, intentional um, pedagogy, intentional design, um, intentional uh, integration and creativity, 
um, that I think- we, we use the word intentional a lot. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and integration. Yeah. Um, and and that part of that, again, is not to, not to curb innovation, but to make sure it's it's in line with what what we value and what we say we are as a church. So, oh, go ahead, yeah. so when you're when you're you're talking about this process, it, would you would you use the word innovation? And do you do you use the word innovation at all? with your with your students or is this is this kind of a byproduct of this intentional this intentional process that you're talking about this is just me being curious now yeah uh it's probably i'd say probably more of a byproduct i'm not sure that we you know we don't you know do okay we're going to do this session or this course or this learning circle on innovation uh but we we do talk about okay um in ministry, why why are you doing this? What's 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 your purpose? How do you find out whether that worked? And uh, often people will find, oh yeah, I'm I'm doing my field placement in a church that's been doing things this way, and it's not been working. So I think I would like to try something new. Um, and so I think people just talk about trying trying something new to get to the their purpose rather than innovation as a as a catch all. That's interesting. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there are times that we talk about, you know, innovative ministries because the church is talking about innovative ministries. Yeah. <laughs> and we want our students to know what, what that means or what that means for other people. But I think we're more likely to talk about uh, creativity um, or intentionality um, uh, or community connection um, or community-based ministries, um, and to see, see that breadth, um, again, not, not that what was before was a monolithic, um, practice of ministry, and that now we're doing something innovation, or innovative, but that actually there was this multiplicity of ministry practices before, and we are, continuing to do a multiplicity of ministry practices now, um, sometimes building on things that have happened before and sometimes going in new directions based on the, the context of ministry, the who is in the room and who is in the community and what are, what are the needs of being God's people today. I think one of the other things that we talk about a fair bit is, is making change or nav navigating change. Um, and I, th I think that's part of uh, our, the real focus on community that we have at CCS is is recognizing that when when you want to do something new, when you want to do something different, um, you've got a whole bunch of people to take with you, um, and some of them may not want to go. Um, and so, how do how do we how do we how do we move people, um, and how do we uh, do that without sort of seizing power and say, "Hey, everybody, we're all going, we're all going here." Uh, how do you do that in a collaborative way that kind of builds the community as it as it goes along? To me, that's also a connection between the the pastoral and prophetic oh, piece yeah. of change, um, and that you know whether it's societal change, um, whether it's changing laws and and social process, uh, or whether it's changing something within a, a community of faith, um, there's always aspects of how does this impact people personally and emotionally and spiritually, um, and how do we care for people in that process? How do they feel like they're connected? Um, and also the prophetic piece of how do we how do we make change that is in the in the direction of justice um, and that is life-giving. Yeah, so so we're, we're really interested in good questions at CCS as opposed to we have a bunch of answers, here you go. Um, it, we want to kind of engage people in what are, the, what are the good questions and a lot of them are social justice kind of questions 
um, and social analysis questions. And so, you know, in relation to innovation and change, you know, asking, okay, well, who's benefiting from the way that things are now? Um, if we do things in a new way, who's going to benefit from that? Who gets to who gets to make the decisions in this? Uh, who's being left out? Uh, who are we consulting? Um, how do we how do we how do we do this in a in a just way? Um, and so we try to do that with within our program, so that our students, when they uh, um, when they go into their ministry, are able to kind of bring that into their uh, into their approaches as well. And do the students kind of are the students picking up easily on this on this way of viewing things? Uh, I I I think so. Um, uh, it's, it's always it, smooth. <laughs> yeah, it's not always smooth, and it, it it is always kind of a process. And and there's, I think, almost a difference between when people kind of come in at the beginning of their kind of their CCS, um, schooling formation, and when they when they leave at the end, um, and and we're always asking them to sort of look back and say, okay, so well, what have you learned? What's changed in you? Uh, and and I think a lot of times people are kind of going, wow, I I've changed so much, um, and um, uh, and be because because our approach, we try to we try to be as integrative as we can of the kind of the whole person. Uh, so it's not just head stuff, but it's heart stuff as well. Um, that that people feel like they've got uh, a variety of tools that they can use when it comes to getting a sense of their context, responding in a in a faithful way, figuring out new ways to new ways to go. We often talk about transformative learning. Um, yeah, transformative learning in all those kinds of ways. Um, but I also think that just by modeling that and having students, you know, repeat that process of transformative learning uh, multiple times in different learning circles, in their field placements, in their mentoring relationships, um, in all of the different contexts sets them up to see opportunities for transformation um, in their ministry beyond their, their schooling or formation experience. Um, and so that, that um, yeah, normalizing of transformation, I think uh, gives a grounding for innovation to happen um, where and when it's possible and, and appropriate. I love that idea, normalizing of transformation. So being in fields where where you where you're seeing this normalizing of transformation, what the, have you have you th seen things that have surprised you from your students or or from your experience with experiences with your students? Oh, this is gonna sound dumb. I, 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 I think I'm almost always surprised when our students come out of the program and then go on to do really interesting and amazing things. Like I should, I should know that that's gonna happen. I should expect that by now. It's happened enough times. But, um, but I'm always, um, you know. So we had one one graduate who went and um, set up a, a church after dark program at her church for particularly kind of for people who are not as uh as grounded in traditional church but a, 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 a creating a place where people can have conversations about things that you don't talk about in church uh we've had, had other students who kind of um are focusing on uh environmental or food security kind of issues uh we've had students who are um you know setting up like uh, queer kids Bible camp, like the people, people figure out, okay, this is, this is where I'm called to go. I'm going there. And, and I kind of go, I did not, I did not see that one coming, but that's partly because I'm not, I'm not where they are. I, you know, they know their context. They know what, what's needed in that community. Uh, and so um, I'm surprised and amazed and always pleased to see they just, they go for it. And I think one of the things uh, Again, is this surprise? Is this pleasantly surpri surprised? Um, is to see them come back and say, I, I didn't realize I would need this skill in this context 
And I'm so glad I had a chance to practice it and work on it um, at CCS. Um, so this sense of the, you know, there's always the unknown. There's always things you come across in ministry, even if you've been doing it for 20 years. Um, but this sense of they felt like they were prepared to encounter things um, in their ministry and that they felt like they had a, a skill toolbox um, to, to meet those with. Um, and that then they're able to flourish uh, in different different settings in different ways um, based on what resonates for them and their personalities, uh, as well as the context they're in. We've had you know, many students be involved in collaborative ministry teams and you know, multiple congregations working together. We've had students in prison and abolition ministry in uh, students writing children's books and curriculum and uh, online things and podcasts and um, kind of everything under the sun. Um, and I think one of the things that's important that we that we try and foster and that I see students bringing is that they see those things as ministry right off the bat. Um, that those things aren't an addition to ministry or they're not something that they have to fight with to call it ministry. Um, they see them as forms of ministry. Um, and I guess maybe that's one of the reasons that I uh, have, sometimes have a hard time with this idea of innovation <laughs> um, is because for us in particular in the diaconate is that you know, we see that variety, that breadth of what is considered ministry and, and start from that place of breadth. Um, and so that's, that's always been important. Um, and that doesn't mean that we are ignoring opportunities for worship or leading funerals or some of the other more commonplace, you know, preaching uh, things that people think of when they talk about ministry. But, um, but I think when we, when we recognize that breadth of ministry, um, everything has an opportunity to be innovative and everything has an opportunity to be connected with tradition. Um, yeah, things don't have to be kind of one thing or the other thing. There's a, there's a joke among CCS students about the CCS and that occasionally in learning circles, people will, will sort of say, okay, but is it this thing or is it this thing? Uh, and we'll often go, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> um. That uh, that reminds me of our, uh, in our curiosity cohort, we do an activity where uh, um, we encourage people to, to start with an idea and then at the end of it say yes, and um, it's, it's it's not quite the same thing, but it is. Mm, yeah. Why not both? Yeah, good, good improv skills. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Exp it's expansive. Expansive, exactly. This is a wonderful conversation. I could talk with the two of you all afternoon, but I don't want to keep you from your uh, from your uh, your important jobs. Um, is there uh, is there anything else either of you would like to say before I let you go today? It's just it's been nice nice talking to you, Sarah, and um, you know invite you and you know anybody who's interested to if you you know check out CCS. Um, we we yeah again like our focus is on diaconal ministry, but we're kind of open to um, people for continuing studies or just lay people who want to learn a bit more about something. Um, we got some we got some spaces for you. We will certainly put your website in the uh in the description online oh, when this is posted. Absolutely. Yeah, great to talk to you and excited to hear the work that that you and and Edge and the growth cohort are doing and uh and glad that we can be a part of it. Great to talk to you both. Um Marcy Gibbon and Scott Douglas are with the Center for Christian Studies in uh, in in Winnipeg. Is it? Yep. In Winnipeg, Manitoba, awesome. and uh, 
thank you so much for talking with me today. And uh, I hope to talk with you again soon. This has been Sarah Levis with another Edgy Conversation. Thanks for everybody that's listening. Take care. Bye-bye.